COVID-19 has pushed back movies such as Black Widow and Wonder Woman. So if you're fiending for a new original comic book adapted action flick, then I'm here to let you know that Netflix is dropping The Old Guard on July 10th. Allow me to explain it and why you should be excited about it. Welcome back to Comic Power. I'm your host, Comic Killer 72 Welcome to another episode of The Quick Flip. This is a program where I go over comic book industry news in a short period of time. Please subscribe to this channel and also click on the notification bell as well. It will remind you when new videos come out. All right, now let's get right into it. The Old Guard is a franchise made its first appearance in The Old Guard Number 1 from February 2017 from Image Comics. It's curated and written by Greg Rucka. He has made a great living for himself as a writer of science fiction action with strong female protagonists. For example, Black Magic from Image Comics about a female detective that is secretly a witch. Or Lazarus, a dystopian tale where the North American governments have collapsed and has been replaced by the feudal system. Greg also had a run on Rebirth Wonder Woman back in 2016. As for the old guard, as you can see, it's fast tracked its way from the pages of comics to live action in extreme speed compared to Hack Slash or Chew or other projects like that that have been in development hell forever. Greg's talent for strong female leaders continues in the old guard because the lead character is going to be played by Charlize Theron, who I think is one of the best living character actors of any gender around today. She is 44 at the time I made this video, and the last thing you saw her in was Atomic Blonde, a character that's based from the graphic novel The Coldest City. She also played Furiosa from the Mad Max Fury Road movie, which was kick butt awesome. Her best work may be Monster from 2003 where she transformed into this character. Yes, that really is her. It's amazing what you can do in movies from gaining weight, some prosthetics, and some makeup. This role landed her an Oscar for Best Actress in 2004, which was earned. Charlize hails from South Africa. Here she is with former President Nelson Mandela. So when you have an actress that's headlining with this type of resume, you know you're in for a good movie. In the old guard, she's the leader of this team of mercenaries. Being that they are immortal, think of this as Highlander meets the X-Force. As for Charlize and the rest of the cast, you could call this the UN because there's so many different actors from different countries in the main cast, such as Chaiwatel EG04, a 42-year-old British actor of Nigerian roots. His first professional work was in Amistad in 1997. He plays a hostage negotiator and the inside man and does the voice of Scar in the Lion King remake. He's probably best known as Barrett Mordo from the Doctor Strange franchise. And then there's Marwin Kanzari, a 37-year-old Dutch actor of Tunisian descent. He's best known to American audiences as Jafar in the live-action remake of Aladdin. And then there's Matthias Schonertz, a 42-year-old Belgium actor, acclaimed in Europe but completely unknown in America. And then there's Luca Marinelli, a 35 year old Italian actor, also acclaimed in Europe but unknown in America. And rounding out the cast is the very lovely Kiki Lane, a 28 year old American actress. As a matter of fact, the only American in the main cast, she got her big break playing the lead in If Bill Street Could Talk, an Oscar winning movie. I made a video previously about who I think is the top 10 actresses that should be considered to play Storm in the X Men reboot. Kiki is on that list. If you want to see where she ranks, go back and watch that. Link in the description. So there you have it, the primary cast for The Old Guard. Now here's a recap. The Old Guard is a live action movie that's going to debut on Netflix on July 10th, 2020. It's based on a comic book that came out in 2017 that was created and written by Greg Rucka. It's about a team of immortal mercenaries and the leader will be played by Charlize Theron in a live action movie. It has a chance to be a big hit because all of the action movies in theaters have been pushed back. Black Widow, Wonder Woman, Milan, New Mutants, Fast and Furious 9. So this is the only action movie of its type coming out and I'll have my popcorn ready and you should too. If you're a comic book investor, the print run on cover A for first print was 23,867 copies. At the time I made this video, CGC 9.8 copies were selling for about $120 plus shipping, but could go up if the movie is a hit. Based on its strong prints and talented cast, I think it should be. Next up is the return of the new comic day pick of the week. The coronavirus outbreak had delayed a lot of shipping on some key books. Not everything's coming out on time yet, but we're slowly getting back to normal. So the pick of the week is Strange Academy number two from Marvel Comics. The Sorcerer Supreme, AKA Doctor Strange, has established a academy to help young wizards develop their magic. Jericho Drum, AKA Brother Voodoo, is the headmaster there. Issue number one came out in February and it was great and it introduced a whole bunch of new characters. You can think of this as the Harry Potterization of the 
Doctor Strange universe. It feels like it would be a good animated show in the future, so so I would suggest that you get in early. The runner-up is going to be Batman number 94 from DC Comics. Not only have they introduced a storyline that gave us punchline, but the new writer on Batman, James Tinian, is getting us back closer to Detective Batman. So you can put Batman back on your pull list if it isn't there already. As you already know, the infamous Snyder Cut for Justice League is going to come out. It will be released on HBO Max sometime in 2021. There's a lot to talk about on this issue, and I will be talking about it in a future rant video. That's kind of an oxymoron because it's a video that's audio only. So am I excited? Well, it's kind of mixed. Batman is my favorite character of all time, but I have some issues with Zack Snyder, which I'll be discussing then. If you'd like to hear some of my previous rants, go into the playlist and click on comic book rant. One of them was my rant about the rumor that Michael Bay was going to be directing a Lobo movie and I couldn't think of anything more disastrous than that. And seeing that, the Snyder Cut rant coming soon. You know the drill. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, give the thumbs up, and share these videos on social media so other people learn about the channel. And don't forget, I do sell comics at my eBay page listed here with a link in the description. One Stop Thrift and Comic Power are run by the same guy. That would be me, Comic Killer 72 I have 100% feedback, by the way. And once again, thank you to my subscribers and viewers who support Comic Power. Until next time, this is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying, bye bye.